Hi everyone, so I am um, back today with a friend and a colleague, um, Marie, who's joining me just now from Australia, and Marie is an intuitive, um, an intuitive mentor, so she has been really receiving a lot of information about what's going on with the planet, what's going on with our energy, and the importance of really trusting, surrendering, and following your your intuition, just trusting yourself more. Um, so today we decided we're going to jump on a call and talk about purpose and talk about it through the lens of spirituality, when it, the messages that she receives, and also through the lens of human design. And that's where I come in. So I'm just going to bring Mary here. I can just I wave at her. Let me just figure out how to bring her. Uh, Mary, Marie. Re, hold on. Uh, there we go. Hold on. Uh, 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 one sec. Why am I struggling? Ah, uh, there we go. I'm on the wrong button. Hello, lovely. Hello, Marie. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm also very well. Just had an amazing boxing class. <laughs> so I always feel so oh. pumped <laughs> after boxing. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, it just gives me like so much energy. I'm like sitting here and I'm like, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, amazing. Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I actually put in a title when angels and human design talk about purpose, something like that. <laughs> I didn't really know what to title our session because I feel like it's so important, you know, for people really understand what's going on, really, because I know um, it's been a lot of a lot of changes. I think, you know, in our physical reality, in our mental, emotional, spiritual, and then of course you get people who are like completely on board with the whole spiritual side, and then people who are still very skeptical. They probably think they're having a midlife crisis. They're not really sure what, what's going on with them. You know, all they know is just yeah. things are just not gelling. Something is just not adding up. That emptiness, the desire yeah. for more, the guilt that comes with it. What should they do? Should they stay in the job? Should they go? What about the children and the husbands and all of the other people who are telling them? And that's why I thought if you just come together and we talk about it from spiritual perspective, because I know you are super intuitive. You get a lot of messages. You get downloads, and I've experienced them personally. And I'm like, oh, how the hell do you do that? I don't know. And, <laughs> and I want to kind of approach it more from human design, which, you know, still spiritual, but I think more scientific side. And then hopefully together mm -hmm. we can shed more light and make more sense for people to really resonate and, and hopefully, you know, relieve, I guess, that pressure and anxiety that so many of them are feeling. So that was my introduction. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and yeah, there is, there's been, I've noticed in, since last year, there's been a lot of people questioning their place in the world, their, their role. Um, a lot of people left careers and a lot of people are sort of now started to wonder a bit more, you know, what I, am I here for? Is this all that there is to life? Especially with, you know, a lot of illness last year in, in the planet and a lot of people facing their own, I don't know, mortality, I suppose. You kind of go to those places, is this it? What am I here for? Um, and what I was, what I've been getting, especially for the last month or so, is that for ascension, spiritual ascension, our growth, our uh, evolution, there is this need for more people to be doing what they are here for, um, to start transitioning them to really what's their soul calling, what's their soul mission, and start really just going within and finding their passion, finding what makes them come alive, finding what they really connect with on a soul level, and start following that path um, after this last two years of lockdowns and stuff where a lot of people just been sort of feeling more into 
you know, having more time to, I suppose, think about what they are doing and revisit where they want to live, what they want to do for a living, what type of lifestyle they want. There's a lot more now asking from spirit, all these people that if they feel they have a calling for something else, it's perhaps a good time to start pursuing that and following their soul and letting that carry them. And as someone who used to work in the corporate world and then had to make that tra that hard transition, and I know you too, and my friend who I just see <laughs> joined the live before, um, you know, a lot of us have had to face that moment of truth with our souls and saying, okay, this is really my calling. This is what I know I'm here for and start taking those steps. It's hard. It is not an easy job and one that we are still trying to navigate as best as we can. Um, but yeah, that's been, what's been coming up for me a lot is helping people find that for themselves and it's almost like a resource allocation of helping them go where they need to be um, to assist with you know, the evolution, I suppose, and ascension process. Exactly. But I mean, just to make it practical for people who are listening, you know, so let's say you're in a job or you're in a relationship, whatever it is, you know, you're not feeling satisfied, but the circumstances are such that you feel powerless to change it, right? Because I mean, that's, let's say, what I've experienced and I know many others do. So, you know, for them, they know something is not gelling. They know something is not adding up. They know that they're feeling that desire for something, but they don't know what it is, right? And I think that's where the scary bit is. It's like, how do I even make that change? How do I even start exploring that if I have no clue what I'm here to do? I mean, that was my challenge, you know? Um, I accept me because I'm like a, well, I'm a generator. So when that frustration builds within me, like to a certain extent, I quit and I just quit, you know, I just literally just left my six figure job and I just like jump into business and no clue what I was doing, jump into second business, like no clue what I was doing, but I don't think I would ever suggest it to anyone else because it's just pure madness. So <laughs> if, if someone is, you know, wondering like, great, like Marie, you've been getting these messages. I understand, but what do I do? Like how, what, what does my journey look like? Have you got any suggestion what the, how they can start exploring that? What always comes, and I get this question asked a lot when I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with clients, they usually come in and I, they would ask maybe, uh, am I on the right path? Or, you know, I, I get a feeling that this is what I'm here for. Um, and usually the answer that comes from the other side is just follow your heart you know in your soul you know what you can hear because you hold that information within and sometimes the biggest mistake that we make is trying to look for someone or something external to tell us you know that magical aha moment that they i don't know an angel comes and it tells you straight away go and start this business the reality is that that's not necessary because we already have the information within it's about following what makes you happy what makes you light up um a lot of we know what our passion is you know if money wasn't an issue what would you do i used to say i'll be all day in bed <laughs> If I didn't have to go to work, I've been bed all day. But believe me, after a few days, that gets tiring. And then what it is, you go help people, you go help animals, you like talking to people, you like start exploring what lights you up and start exploring what makes you happy and what makes your soul. It's from, it really is from the soul that where all the answers are. And unfortunately for people like us, it means also quieting the mind. And it sometimes it's not easy. We kind of have to work a bit for those answers, but they are there. They really are. Yeah. Um, a lot of... Yeah, no, sorry, go on. Yeah, go on. No, no, that's, you know, sometimes they, that exercise of what would your um, ideal day look like and you know who do you want to talk with and who do you want to surround yourself with what problems you want to solve all that sort of self-exploration helps narrow it down and follow what makes you happy 
Exactly. And what actually interesting, what I started observing for me personally, and also in the lives of, you know, my clients and other people I speak, usually it all comes to your childhood, your deep, deep childhood. Like, what did you love to do? What games did you play? Right. And that usually yeah. is a really good starting point. Um, you know, some people don't have the memories. So that's when I feel like there's obviously so much conditioning, so much programming, and it's just unpeeling those layers of onions through various techniques, processes, journaling is good, uh, like uh, some other, you know, tools that you can also um, incorporate. But let's say for me, it came down to my whole childhood. I was like obsessed looking for witches, for looking for UFOs, for looking for time machines. I used to tell stories that at the age of five, I was suspended from a nursery because um, the stories I would tell was about reincarnation, about the soul, um, you know, coming back to earth. I don't even know where, like, I was coming up with that stuff, but I was absolutely obsessed with it. But then, of course, over the years, you know, I was like, I mean, I grew up in Soviet Russia, right? That's not what people spoke there about. <laughs> it's like it was not normal. And, you know, that nobody else is speaking about it around you. You know, that's, you know, that's nobody else's interest. So you feel like a weirdo. And you start obviously blending in and, you know, and then you kind of lose that. But when I... When I do like the inner child work now, and I almost got back to the me being like three, probably until about six year old, and I connect with the child because that child knows exactly what my purpose is. That child has that connection to the source, and that's how I actually get my courage and my inspiration from. Because everywhere from about age of five until maybe like 41, it's like just like, okay, I've got to work on that. There is so much, so much stuff that needs to be unlearned and not done. So whenever I work with my clients, like, you know, we'll work on that to get them to the earliest memory. Like, what did you love to do? And then start kind of building on that. That's great because absolutely our, our soul knows exactly. We have all the answers within and especially as a child, you are so much closer to the perfection of the soul right? without all the adding information as we go through life and all the meaning that we give things recently a few weeks ago i was um talking with a client and she is pregnant and her baby <laughs> this soul was already telling us what he's coming in to do she's due i think next week and the baby was already saying i'm going to be disruptive i'm coming to teach new things uh, and was giving mom all these tips you know and mom is very open-minded and was super happy to be having a kid like that but it's amazing as you said childhood the closer we are to that pure state we have all the answers and then if we don't remember as you said it's about working for them and going within and I'm peeling all the layers, um, but the answers are there and always very linked to hobbies, to what we like doing, to how we like to spend our time. Um, and I think most of the souls at the moment asking themselves these questions are actually people that are here to serve others. But a few years ago, that wasn't heard of, right? We, we just needed to incorporate chasing money and just, you know, build a career. We never put a lot of emphasis into whether we are serving others or not. And now it's like that tide is changing and I think it's really beautiful. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I mean, like five years ago, you know, I've always been interested, but I've never really gone far exploring it. And even in my career, well, in my business, you know, Every time I started chasing money or clients, the universe would literally like throw me completely back. And it's, it's like, no, you're like off the track again. And then I would feel that pain that in my body, like everything would dry up, everything stops working. And then you just go to basics. Like, what am I, what am I not connecting to, you know? And it's just been going deeper and deeper and so much more inner work. It probably became 80% of my focus, my inner work. And then I take actions whenever I feel inspired. But what I also want to touch on is that, you know, what help, what stops really people from following that purpose, right? Because, you know, in my other business, I've got a companionship and transport business, and I work a lot with elderly people, like in the 90s. Actually, the other day, I took a gentleman, he was 93, to see his brother, he's 98. 
And I hear a lot from people like that, you know, oh, I wish I could have done this and I wasted my life doing that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and there's so much regret and they are so like sick. A lot of them like in a wheelchair, they can't walk. And on Saturday I was taking this guy and I was actually driving. I was in the front and I was crying. All of the stuff oh. was like regretting he didn't do. And he was telling me about his brother and how sick he is. And I'm like, God, please don't let me end up like this. I mean, there was just obviously I felt so much compassion for him. But I'm like, we don't have to live our lives like that, you know. But then what happens, we get so complacent, so comfortable with our lives. You know, we've got like money and families and a certain house that making the change becomes scary because we don't mm. trust ourselves. We don't trust ourselves to follow that that nudge, that intuition, that some that desire. So we suppress it. We suppress it and then we try to fill it more with holidays, with shoes, with I mean, that's what I was doing. I'm just speaking from personal experience, you know. And what I know that one thing, well, two things really, that really the core of this, that prevents us from moving forward and exploring what else is out there is self-love and self-worth, yeah? Because, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, it's like self-love was selfish. You have to put priorities of others first. So you always have to, like, please somebody else's expectation. You've got to mold yourself into someone who they want you to be. And then it's always easier to trust someone else than to trust yourself, you know, because if it doesn't work, you're like, oh, well, you know, that person told me to do that. You see, it just didn't work. But when you have to try yourself, to trust yourself, and you've got to follow what you're calling, your passion, your joy, it feels very, very scary. And I think that's what kind of holds people back. What do you think of that? Definitely a lot of fears, a lot of the, um, the also the conditioning, you know, um, that you have to follow a career that you need. In my culture, at least, it was always um, being an employed by someone else is the safest path, right? So you need to go and work for a big corporation because doing your own thing or being independent is very risky. So there's a lot of those fears um, and about doing something different and being seen doing something different. And what if you're successful and then everybody else talks about you or you stop, stop being relatable? Or what if you fail and everybody makes fun and all those things, right? Not that people would make fun, but, you know, it's just seeing being visibly failing is, is, is horrible. It's not something that we want to experience. So it's a lot of that that when you trace them back, definitely go back to self-love and letting yourself have what you want, letting yourself go for it. Because like we say, you know, if you can see it, if you can dream it, it means that you have everything within to go for it. Um, so really, if you feel that calling, the natural thing is to want to go for it. But it's all those fears and also the uh, lack of self-worth, you know, when you feel that you're not good enough to actually deserve or have that dream, that vision that comes up, then it's also um, another thing that gets on the way. So there's a lot of undoing that needs to happen, a lot of peeling back the layers to then eventually get out there and go for it. Um, but yeah, also, I think now we are sort of redefining business as well. We are all coming up with these new models of new ways of being doing things, which is actually amazing. I, I think we are birding a new, um, I don't know, a new way of doing business, a new human doing business a different way. Like you say, working when you feel like it and following that inspiration. I think it's it's really amazing that this new paradigm is is coming up exactly and i mean you know um i think like business is by what not what you are doing but who you are being right and there's a big mindset yeah. shift that happened for me as an employee it was all about what i was doing very linear very physical very material very practical but then it's in a business it's not so much what you are doing it's like who you are actually being and it probably took me about two and a half years to realize that i was like oh my gosh, I'm still being that mm -hmm. person that I was two and a half years ago, you know, like in my body, yeah. my nervous system hasn't adjusted, hasn't caught up really with my self-awareness because I've been doing so much self-work. So my self-awareness, my consciousness, like when in my body, my nervous system hasn't adjusted. So it's been a lot of like work, I guess, to catch up. But um, I just wanted to like leave, you know, some practical 
tips for people who are watching and who you know interested really to to understand what they can do you do to feel freer with them so themselves to trust themselves more maybe they're already like living their purpose you know but they they're still feeling stuck like something is not gelling they're putting a lot of effort they they're struggling and it's just everything feels so exhausting so i mean for really really help for me you know i'm a big love of human design and in human design yeah. like i'm a generator and so you are thinking of a generator manifesting generator so whenever yeah. <laughs> I work like with the generators and manifesting generators I always say like the gut is the most important thing um and having like a a sacral day you know a sacral where you literally trust your gut if your gut says stay in bed you mm-hmm. you stay in bed if your gut says go for a walk even if you've got like a big launch or a big business meeting tomorrow then you go for a walk and it can feel really really scary but when you actually trust it and you practice it you don't even have to make a whole week out of it but you can like just do it mm-hmm. for half a day right it really yeah. builds that connection it's like a muscle it builds your intuition So that just really really helped me and especially when more now I literally I don't move until I feel that impulse not even impulse but that pull towards something I'm like all right what what is my calling today what shall I be doing today and yesterday it was more like journaling working on your vision working on your energy and then by like 8 o'clock at night I was like I'm inspired to write a post and that's what I did you know um so that was Hello. one thing and another thing would really help me also in human design is understanding my incarnation cross so incarnation cross is your purpose it's based on the energies in your in your sun and the earth um and together the four energies they hold the whole entire energy really of your chart so this is who you came here to be this is your life purpose and your soul purpose and how you can start living it out and when i did it about 2 years ago i was blown away because everything there is exactly what i've experienced what i felt in my deep childhood which is why i said go back to your childhood you know but it's just reconf- reaffirming that giving me so much validation is like yes i am on my right path i am not crazy for taking so many <laughs> risks so i was just that relief i remember i felt so that was just two things you know for me to understand how my energy works how I can navigate through opportunities and make decisions um and also to really understand my purpose in the chart what who am I what am I here for am I on the right track so that was help really helped me so let me share with us what you really need to well for me um um because of how I work with how yourself and spirit guides is always knowing that we have all the answers within and holding that space giving ourselves that space to really listen to what our inner voice is calling us to do in terms of the purpose in terms of who we are here to serve even if it feels sometimes too big um we can always break it down and go step by step following that inner guidance that really the inner guidance is the guidance from above with our channel right and just also trusting a lot of the times we know uh, i 90% of the clients that i get that come and ask that question is always the answer is always you already know you already know you can feel it you know when say what you're here to do just trust it and then also trust that when you start to take the first steps the universe will come and and meet you halfway you need to get started so you know kind of like take that leap of faith show that you are committed and they will meet you halfway they will help um but it takes that you know moment of okay i'm going so for it and making that decision and claiming it and saying i'm here to do i know that they have my back and i'm here to embody this vision and embodying is the biggest word because like you said you know sometimes you can your consciousness is here but your body is lag- this lagging and this does disconnect so we really need to bring the vision and live it and act like the person we know we are here to be and make decisions from that place just trusting that we have everything that we need and magic happens when we find that inner alignment the thing is no one can do it for us and that's the hardest question sometimes we want someone else to give us yes. the answers or we have we want someone to tell us 
what to do or we want someone to really reassure that everything is going to be okay but the only person who can give that to ourselves is ourselves exactly. nothing else matters even the naysayers even all the conditioning the mom and dad telling us not to is too risky we can only give that reassurance to ourselves and it's hard but it actually makes it so easy at the same time there is Just, very you know hard. shut all the noise and listen to that mm-hmm. inner voice Yeah, absolutely. And just to la- um, add on the last note is that, as you said, it's listening, right? And it's not something we naturally do because we are just so, so busy. You know, I mean, I have a lot of friends who are business owners in careers. They're like, oh my gosh, I wish I had a spare minute. I'm like, well, what are you doing with your day? Oh, I'm cooking and I'm cleaning and I'm working. I'm running after kids. And I'm like, well, when are you spending time with yourself? I don't have time for it. Uh, and then mm-hmm. it's like a rat race, you know, and as I said, I was that person. I mean, I was like on the go, you know, for me, my relaxation was to run like half a marathon in a day. That was how I was relaxing. I didn't come home and then eat peanut butter and then go a quickly shower and get everybody out for another walk. Uh, I'm just exhausted just even thinking about it. Uh, but finding that Matthew. space in your day just to sit and listen, you know, just quiet with you or just you, that is that's was the biggest shift for me that's what really helped me and as you said like trusting yourself and that's why i feel like when you've got tools for me is i mean human design it just gives you that validation that permission to be you um and to really find us answers you know that you are seeking for not from based on opinions of others because we all can do that we're really good at asking hey what do you think i should do and like oh, okay yeah let me try and do that and it's like oh yeah so and so told me and it didn't work but really trust yourself to make decisions so and of course you know yeah. speaking to you and then getting the input from angels um that's another thing it's always good for our logical mind to have that validation just to get our nervous system on board with where we are heading just feeling safe exactly and yeah sometimes even we always we all have the same 24 hours in the day right it's on is about how we want to spend them to me i remember when i first first started paying attention um even when i was cooking i would just put music on to distract me or if i was going for a drive i would have the music or the radio one never switching off we can't make time in those little moments i actually get a lot of downloads driving and cooking even more than i get on a meditation but it's about being available to listen yeah. and if we are not available we create this manufactured busyness then yeah we we make it a lot harder on ourselves absolutely absolutely Well, it was amazing to talk to you as always. Thank you so much. It's like always a pleasure talking to you. And yes, I hope the you know anybody was listening. I see there were some people joining in. I hope it helps you if you're feeling stuck, if you don't know what to make decisions, if you're not trusting yourself. Just the key thing here is to listen and to give yourself permission to really go for it. You know, the worst can happen is like well you made a mistake there's not actually a mistake you gain the new experience you know what works what doesn't yeah. and you can always try it again and again and again but the worst thing is i see and it breaks my heart is seeing this clients of mine who in their late 80s late 90s just complaining about unfulfillment of their lives and how they stack and i just don't want it to be me i know mary you don't want it to be you and i'm pretty sure anybody who's actually still listening to this i know you don't want that to be you it's not going to be you for sure <laughs> no so anyway um so lovely to talk to you and i'm sure we'll speak again soon yeah thanks for having me Thank you. have a lovely day bye bye